Have you ever wondered why? When? How much? What if? Well, you're in luck, because you're listening to the Hypotheticast. Three best buds. On a mission. To ask all the questions. And get all the answers. beginning one and the end one my name is david my name is mike and my name is emily i'm back for hey. a limited time only because we're all here for a limited time only on planet oh, yikes. earth yeah let's make it dark <laughs> get Welcome real to the realest episode yet mortality doesn't have to be a bleak subject that's true however it's not the subject of our podcast today i'm pretty excited to die <laughs> oh, wow let's do this and we're actually talking about dreams yeah and not oh, like yeah. goals and hopes not goals for the and future hopes. get those out of here we don't need them we're done we're done with those yeah. we're talking about the weird brain yeah. journeys that brain you journeys. take when you're asleep brain journeys the scary stuff the freaky stuff the nice stuff yeah. the mundane stuff those are the best ones. Yeah. mundane banal dreams they happen they sure do and uh we're gonna talk about all of them Today, every one, every single one yeah, that's ever been. I keep a dream me. journal, yeah, oh, and yeah? that I've had since I've been alive. Oh, good. Like my parents wrote down my baby dreams in it. Like some <laughs> people have their baby footprint yeah. diaries. Mine is my baby dreams. They're like, like okay. imprinted on cement. Like yeah, a they, they, f- yeah. they put they put my dreams <laughs> yeah. into the journal. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that seems like a thing you can do. They put a complicated apparatus on my head that would draw oh, a yeah. picture in the journal. Of Eternal what sunshine my dream of the was. spotless baby. Yeah, that's you. Uh-huh. <laughs> What's the weirdest dream you've ever had? I would say the weirdest dream I've ever had involved. It was it was one of those multi part dreams, and it's hard to relay dreams in the way that they truly feel. But I know for a fact that I was chasing the Kool Aid Man through multiple different backdrops and scenarios, and one oh, of them man. was a big pool. The, yeah, yeah. the part that haunts me to this day, oh. it's actually kind of creepy <laughs> when I think about it, is like I was trying to get him and he was always like, it's hard to see through water. And I was in this swimming pool, swimming down deep. And it kind of felt like the ocean because it was so expansive. And I could see his stupid little red body off in the distance, just like, oh, yeah, and around. But his voice was also echoing in my head, like from the side and from the back, like he was there. But then I would look and he wasn't. And he was far off again. Wow. And it was so frustrating and paralyzing. I don't know what the right word is, but it was very, very aggravating to try to get that Kool-Aid man. Wouldn't the Kool-Aid dissipate in the water of the pool? Not in human form. That's what's getting me about this scenario. Yeah. Is how did the Kool-Aid stay inside the pitcher yeah, what's of wrong his with body? Your dream, that is pretty impossible. Yeah. I should have asked him that. Maybe he would have like poofed out of a dream. The existence. rest of it checks out as being <laughs> yeah. legitimate. I mean, he's kind of like the gingerbread man, right? Run, run, run as fast as you can. Can't catch me. I'm the Kool-Aid man. That's his <laughs> motto. Yeah. What's yours, Emily? Um, There's no way I could pick one. I've had really vivid dreams that I usually remember for a long time, for most of my life. And wow. there's just far too many. Fair. But I will say probably the craziest ones that I have. I have sort of like categories of like types uh-huh. that happen a lot. And I have had a lot of very intense post-apocalyptic scenario dreams. Yeah. There are always like kind of disturbing and actually scary when I'm in them. Sure. But so many of them have such satisfying narrative arcs <laughs> and like plot points that waking up from them is so amazing because it's like I just huh. get to like go through mm. the little movie that my brain created yeah. and I'm so proud of it. It's like you actually saw a movie. Yeah, God. it kind of is. It's well, roommate Jason used to have movies like that. Amazing. Movies like that too. <laughs> Dreams like that too. And I got so mad at him. I was like, you're making that up. I know, I know. You're That's I've had up. multiple like, people don't believe say you. Like, like, I promise. That I promise. There's true. just no way. Yeah. And I know that we do a thing though with dreams that I think mm-hmm. is interesting where like in the telling of them, we yes. confine them and like define them more than they actually right. are. You know how like a lot of times you'll be like, mm-hmm. when you're thinking about it, you're like, well, it was kind of like this. 
but not really. Yeah. But then when we're telling them, we just like make a decision about what it right. is so that it makes sense to mm -hmm. the waking brain. Yeah. I mean, that's what we do with all of life. That's a good point. We give it a narrative by building a gestalt. I had a dream about a genie once <laughs> and I realized that I was dreaming and nice. I was like, oh, I got to cool. ask for as much crap as I can from this genie before I wake up. But the thing okay. was that the genie was granting the wishes, but giving me a lame version of the thing that I nice. wanted. So I was in a phase where I really wanted a bunch of Ninja Turtle action figures. So I, I wished for this, I don't know what it was, like uh, um, Robo Turtle. I'm yeah. sure the Turtle fans will write in uh, upset about whatever <laughs> I'm calling him. I wish for it. And then I got like a rip off version of the action figure. I remember being like, oh, this isn't what I wanted, but at least I kind of got it. And then I got like pizza that was like gross and cold and flat. Flat. I mean, like thin. <laughs> I mean, most yeah. pizza is flat. I want some 3DS I love that pizza. You like knew that you were dreaming, but it was still somehow important to make the wishes. Well, I thought <laughs> I was going to wake up soon. So I was like, so you just wanted to experience whatever you could of the wishes. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm going to wake up. I better just wish as much as I can. <laughs> Got it. I don't think there was the three wish limit either. How fancy. But it nice. was all pretty lame. What a generous, but ultimately lame genie. Yeah. It was, it was a strange scenario. Sometimes I still think I'm in that dream. Maybe you are. Ask me for something real quick. Hey, David, make me a bird. Okay, here is one. It, it's just a rotisserie chicken from Cub, but it's way too old and you can't eat it. It's poison <laughs> spoiled. You can still get some use out of that. What are you going to use it for? Scaring the neighbor kids. Nice. On this show, we have segments. <laughs> Our first segment is called Would You Rather? And that is a segment where I, this week, ask everyone questions. We're going to choose between two options. And I have lots of questions that you folks, you listeners, have sent in to me. Oh, goody. And I'm going to read one right now. Are you ready? I'm ready. Yeah. This first one comes from Michael Renner. Hey. Would you rather have nightmares the rest of your life, but complete control of your actions in them? Or would you never lucid dream again, but have incredibly boring work dreams? Here's the thing about this one. Yeah. Most of my nightmares are work dreams. So like a boring work dream is like a nightmare. Like that to me is worse. I'd rather be able to control it and like mm -hmm. run from like the nightmare stallion that's chasing me Ooh, down like stallion. the block behind my childhood home. That's a work dream? No, this is the <laughs> other nightmare one. Like oh, I'm oh, like I'm you, thinking like these are all out yeah, nightmares. Yeah. Oh yeah, but I can Turned like fight back. Mm. Hopefully, I'm still getting good rest from these things. Uh, well, that's the, that's what I thought at first. I was yeah. like, initially, I was like, horror movies for life, baby, let's go. But then I was like, wait, no, people that struggle with nightmares like don't sleep sometimes. Yeah, that's true, and that's nasty. I'm still gonna go with it. I though. like to sleep. It's important to me. So I'm, I'm teetering right now. Emily, what do you think? So is this, this is the only kind of dream I'll have? Yeah. Either you're going to have nightmares, but you can control them or really boring work dreams that you can't control at all. I would say nightmares because it sounds like there's like just more opportunity for interesting things to happen. Definitely. Um, One man's nightmare also, is another man's fun time. having control over what I can do. That's cool. That doesn't necessarily say it's a lucid dream. I guess that's true. I guess that's, I guess what that's a lucid the dream is, isn't lucid it? Lucid dream. Uh, I, think. I guess. I guess that's yeah. a good point. I, I always think of lucid as being like you know it's a dream mm. and you can control. Let's say you also okay cool have that yeah. So then I do that too like the because then you also can have the comforting thought in the dream that right. this is just a dream. Yeah. Yeah, it seems I mean, nice. if you can really have full control, let's say mm -hmm. you're in that nightmare for a while, you could take a nap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just like curl up like in a haunted forest, like in a little tree nook and just Eventually, like take a yeah, you, you could, get used to it. You would just sort of live in that space and yeah. realize that nightmares are just people like us. Yeah. Nightmares are people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you could just get along with them. Uh -huh. That sounds cool. Yeah. I just think whenever an option has boring in it, I can't pick it. I just can't yeah. cuz like if I'm going to have a lot of dreams, I want them to at least be exciting. Like I don't have time to have boring dreams. Get that out of here. I got to pick nightmares and I got to want to run Me around too. in them. Yeah, I want to run run around in those nightmares. Hey, guess what? This one's from Nick Menzhuber. Imagine the technology has been developed to capture dreams as if they're a high definition movie, except there's no edit feature. 
Would you rather become known as the leading expert at interpreting the dreams of others, but no one is ever interested in your dreams? Or become known as the person with the raddest, weirdest dreams ever? Interpreting. Yeah? You want to be the guru? Yeah. And I feel like, I don't know, I think dreams are sometimes really intimate and I don't want everybody knowing. I'm ah, not just talking yeah. about dirty dreams, well, you guys. Well, but you could underwear. Yeah, dreams. you are. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, yes, uh, underwear are. dreams. You underwear could, dreams. You could be known as the person with rad dreams and not have to show all your dreams. But it seems right? like, well, mm. that's a good point. He didn't point. say you had to show the world all your dreams. Like people become famous for stuff and they don't show everyone everything. That's a good point. <laughs> that's true. Right. Like I do really like watching Hugh Jackman on screen, but I've never seen his penis and it's okay. <laughs> I still like him. That <laughs> is such a good metaphor for this, David. You haven't seen The Greatest yeah. Showman yet, I guess. Oh, you're right. Because that's what he show, shows. That's what girl, he shows. Right? Oh, I thought that was like a nickname that's for it. That's what he shows. <laughs> it's my greatest showman. Oh, no. <laughs> yucky. Yucky, Hugh Jackman. Why do you call it that? It's gross. Call it your Wolverine, if anything. I think... I'm going to choose raddest dreams because nice. I've, I, I don't really have dreams very much. Uh-oh. I don't have dreams that I remember okay. or that I experienced. So I'd love yeah. to have that. And then even if I don't remember my dreams, I guess I can watch them on TV and everyone <laughs> will love funny. it. Also like I'm not big on dream interpretation. Like I feel like dreams are just a lot of random shit. And if it's like obvious what they are, it's like, great. You're anxious about that job interview or that relationship. But if not, like, it's like, I don't need someone else to tell me about it. Yeah. Yeah. You're not interested in that. I don't think it's totally invalid, but it's not something that I want to do. I would rather have the cool dreams. You may have just convinced me if I don't have to show all of them. Because initially I was like, oh, I do like the idea of like telling people what their dreams meant. But then I thought about like never being able to get people to stop. Yeah. Like people being like, no, watch this one, watch this one, watch this one. And like friends being like, okay, but can I just show you one more? That's the one. That's the one. Like, oh, that would get to be really taxing and exhausting. Mm. And dreams are weird. And I don't want to consume all of that. If it's your job... Like it's like being yeah, a therapist, like a, but everybody yes, knows exactly. you're an amazing therapist. And then all your friends are like, okay, but what do you think this is? Or like being great at massage. Yeah. Then everyone's like, Hey, give me a quick free one. It's like, actually, this is my job and I get paid right, for this. Like, right. I, and I think you would run into that same problem. Yeah. Of everyone around you, Tanner constantly, he'd wake you up in the middle of the night and be like, Hey, Emily. And that would be pretty annoying. You'd have to lay down a lot of boundaries and boundaries are cool. But they're hard. they can be hard to, yeah. to construct. Yeah. As long as I don't have to show every single dream that I have to everybody in the world, yeah. then I'm down with that one. <laughs> cool. And I don't think you do. It does not say that you yes, have to. You're right. You are just known as the cool dream haver. Yeah. Which sounds awesome. Yeah. I already am kind of known as that. So. <laughs> in some meetup group circles. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys want to meet up and share dreams? No, no they just that meet exists, up to hear right? Emily's dreams. Oh, shit. They that don't share fun. Yeah. dreams I'd with go. each other. Okay. This next question is from Missy Kiddock. Would you rather have dreams with involved storylines or plotless dreams about flying or some other cool activity you can't do? IRL. That means in real life. Oh, thank oh. you. You're welcome. I thought it was URL. Oh, yeah. URL is uh, real life. Oh, that's tough. I think I'd still choose the plot because I really yeah, like my dreams that are super you plot have heavy. Plot dreams. Um, and I don't know. I've had a couple flying dreams before, and they're okay, but mm. it's not like actually flying. That's e- Emily. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> dreams it's true. are not real. But I also like. I feel like sensations like that in dreams are not always mm. super realistic ah, to me. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. Like I don't. I can wake up and remember plot details. I can't often remember specifics of like that's where i i uh, disagree but that's yeah. my experience of those dreams maybe huh. is more vivid because i've had dreams where i can't fly per se but i can float on command i can just sort of tell my body to shut gravity off and then i just kind of float up to the ceiling or Whoa. to the top of a doorway or like something like that burping soda from willy wonka yeah exactly or like laughing in mary poppins where I just how kinda, high have you gone Oh, Mike's so high. No, no I'm actually <laughs> always inside. I'm. I think you just subconsciously I'm ceiling. scared of going outside when I. Mm. I think there's a part of my brain that doesn't actually want to fly like a bird. I just want to float around a house. I've had dreams. I actually have had a number of lucid dreams, and oh, well, exciting. When I was younger, yeah, and I remember thinking, if I'm in a dream right now, I'll be able to fly. Sure, and then I did. And it was great. Nice. So I choose flying. Yeah, that's the appeal. Also, of but it was it's a awesome. very like 
I couldn't just, I had to kind of learn it. Like you have to learn to swim. I had to kind of like paddle my <laughs> arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I do remember getting, I was outside and I remember mm. getting freaked out and trying to grab the roof of my house. That was scary. But then I think it just went with it and it was soothing. Yeah, I think flying mm. dreams are soothing enough. Yep. And having a narrative yeah. in my dream, I, I guess I, it is fun to have a plot line. But the flying, it's pretty sweet. It's pretty cool. Pretty, and it does say also. I've just never had a good uh, flying dream. Yeah. It's going to happen for you. I believe. Thanks, guys. Tonight. In dream interpretation books, it does, flying is something that says, like, that's a positive. Like, that's usually a soothing thing, I think. Oh, not that it means something good about you, but that it helps you. I don't know. Well, both, really. It's like like it helps you, but then it says that you're good because you feel good about the flying. (laughs) I don't know. You know what they say? Half of feeling good is feeling good. Yep. My dad has a lot of flying dreams. Uh, when I think huh. about flying dreams, I think about my dad. Shout out to Russ. Have you been I, in your like dad's? He was dead. I just you pointed been? to the sky. <laughs> he, really he is alive currently. And as dreaming. We, record the, probably we are dreaming. all in his dream. Yeah. We are all in the dream of a mad Russ. <laughs> he loves, he will rave about flying dreams. He just, he's like, I love it. <laughs> you I guys like have take to try this. I, he, yes. <laughs> have you ever tried flying in a dream? It's wild. I, I do think it's the closest I've ever heard my dad to being excited about something psychedelic. Like he just loves flying. He's in not going to do, he's not going to do acid, but he can fly in his well, I don't know. I think he loves acid too. Oh really? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. He just doesn't talk about it as much. Yeah. Okay. He doesn't talk about it as much, but I've seen his acid chests that he has upstairs <laughs> how do you store acid <laughs> yes in great chests no he lo- he loves to fly i think he would he would pick that for sure i'm going to choose for my dad and say that he would pick flying good dreams. good thank you from now on would you rather i choose for my dad <laughs> hope that's cool dad shout out you just you just pointed upwards for your dad again you really did. Is maybe, very much in a life he is I haven't been he's upstairs. in emily's attic that's why he's, he keeps pointing yeah up. no he's definitely not up that's our bedroom <laughs> he's a sneaky guy wow this is a very fun one so let's do this this next one is from joe holm would you rather all your dreams were well-known musicals and you could pick which character you wanted to be at the start or nature documentaries where you were the animal being filmed but you could hear david attenborough's voiceovers as you lived your life and you could choose to do unusual things to confuse and or amaze him him so <laughs> Not like the musical one was David i'm the star of the musical you get to, no, you get to pick whoever every you time are. at the beginning it gives you like a character selection screen and you get to say okay of all these people i want to be this one in this musical and then the musical happens and you get to be that person mm, okay. within the musical so you can be the main character you could also be a chorus member and just kind of chill backstage for a while if you want okay i'm definitely going with the musical one not just yeah. because i like musicals and performing and mm-hmm. stuff but because Nature documentaries are cool and fun to watch, Definitely. Um, but I frequently they're frequently like scary and dangerous for the animals True. themselves. And maybe it's just the drama of the editing. Tanner and I have been watching the new uh, show Dynasties, or as David Attenborough puts it, Dynasties. Dynasties. Is this about nature? Yeah. It's not it, a soap it, opera it, from no, the 70s? No, it follows, oh, every episode follows a different like family of a type of animal so there's like a lion episode that one's the the best the lions one is the coolest mainly because the main point of them is that lion men are trash and lion females are amazing Um, almost always it's like sad and treacherous for a lot of the time this one's dying. This is a horrible situation that they find themselves in now. And even though I could do crazy things and confuse David Attenborough, <laughs> I also mm-hmm. like might die or like might die. my loved ones might die. And that Oof. I just don't like that That's as scary. much. So yeah, musicals. Like that. Yeah, that sounds more fun. Yeah. More colorful. And I feel like you're mm. right that musicals have happier endings almost exclusively. There's yeah. a f- some sad musicals, yeah. but overall people usually have a good time. Nature documentaries, yeah, you're like, you're lucky if you get food. And if you do, you're killing another animal to <laughs> right, do it. Right, right. Yeah. And like, usually, I guess the thing I'm thinking about right now is that like, someone in your family is going to die. Oof. You're right. Like one of your babies Jeez. or your sister yeah. or your mom or whatever. Oh, that's terrifying. I just, I, for some reason, I was like, oh yeah, I get to be a little mouse. <laughs> like I, this whole time I was thinking. I, mean, I guess if it's a dream, I, I could, guess you could be. Yeah, it is a dream in which I am whatever on this show. And then I experience some trauma of some kind, probably because that's how those things go. As Emily said, yeah, I want to be a mouse. 
<laughs> or like maybe like a snake. The ultimate mouse. prey. Yeah, the yeah, ultimate mouse, prey. Literally everything eats a yeah. mouse, yeah. except yeah. cheese. Cheese does everything not eat mice. Everything eats a mouse, baby. Uh, yeah, I am the tastiest food. That's what it's called. Uh, I think I would, my show would be called Die Nasties instead <laughs> okay. of Dynasties. And it would be about how every predator that tried to kill a mouse was killed by a bigger predator right before. That's actually That'd amazing. Really and the mice, the, the yeah. mouse just like claps and eats yeah. some cheese. Well, I mean, some Dynasties. of the mice claps. Me as a mouse, I'd probably just like give them the bird. Sure. Flip, flip sure, that sweet sure, midzy sure. to them. You know, you know what I mean? Oh They'd be like, God. eat it, snake. And by eat it, snake, I mean eat it thing that's eating the snake. Hey, 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 gotcha. I'm a mouse. So fun. I have a 1.5 year lifespan. The meat. The meat is a segment where we get, uh, we delve a little deeper into the topic with a question or two that spurs deep conversation. Yeah. So my meaty question for you today is, let's say that someone tells you definitively and you believe them that your dreams have meaning and that there are messages in your dreams that would be valuable for you to understand and know. First of all, what do you if you had to if you had to sort of make a guess at it, what do you think your dreams have been telling you so far or recently? And then the second part to the question is, what would you do going forward to try and glean more knowledge and understanding of your dreams? Hmm. Hmm. Well, I'm going to start off by saying that I don't really have dreams. So, <laughs> so when Emily suggested this premise, I was like, I don't dream. You do. You just don't remember them. <laughs> no, I know. I know that's the thing. So I would first have to hack into my dreams yeah. and find out what's going on in there. Right. So why don't I remember it? There are ways to uh, increase the likelihood that you'll remember your dreams. Tell me one. Uh, Inception? No. Yes. Yes. Inception. Have people uh, go in it. Matt Damon needs to get into your dream. Leonardo dream. DiCaprio. Why Matt Damon? He's got to get in there. Why is it Matt Damon? He, know, he movie? just has to. He's not in Inception. No. Oh, Inception 2, David, though. <laughs> David, stop. Stop these shenanigans. Matt Damon just wants to get into your brain. I believe, and I haven't read up on this recently, but I believe a big way to do it is to have a notebook by your bed and uh -huh. the unfortunate thing is that it should be any time you even like slightly there, there are times in the night when you like almost kind of wake up uh, and then you yeah, go right yeah. back to sleep right so i think you're supposed to basically take any time that happens and jot down anything that you remember even if it's just a vague feeling or an image and then uh, obviously when you wake up again in the morning so maybe sometimes that'll be complete blank but a lot of times if you are in that mode, if you sort of train your brain to sort of back up and look at what it was just experiencing, it'll start to get better at capturing that and at keeping you in that place where you can kind of remember for longer. Maybe. Do you think you would try that? Well, the thing about that is, like, I don't even have those moments. Like, I don't mm. usually wake up and be like, oh, I had a dream. Mm. Like, I usually wake up and I'm like, I'm tired. <laughs> I d I'm just not a good sleeper. Maybe that has yeah, something to do with it. That actually, might. maybe you get less REM, and there you get less. Yeah, dreams. I don't think I'm getting enough. I uh -oh. think it's like that episode of that show where they don't sleep and then they die. Remember that one? Oh, it was Star Trek: The Next Generation. Yeah, oh. there was one where they like everyone stopped dreaming, and then they were like, "If we don't dream, we're gonna die." And then like <laughs> like Data dreams or something. Write in and tell me what that episode was. I'm not gonna do any research about it. You got it. But I think that's where I'm at right now. Is okay, I'm so probably, then I think I think Prince. what you could do is videotape myself. Somehow get into like a sleep study or or something. Mm. Uh, you'd have to have like a doctor who would be in on this doctor with who? you because then they could wake you up when you're in that phase of your oh, sleep yeah. and be like remember tell me what you're dreaming about. yeah uh, i uh volunteer to be that to be that doctor you're not a doctor not you yet, can't just maybe. volunteer to be a doctor <laughs> <laughs> i think i've been doing it wrong I volunteer then. to be a doctor to diagnose you and yeah that's weird I, i've definitely been doing that that's strange i should probably stop huh. yeah yeah that's not good yeah I, i'm just gonna have to like mine for dreams inside that old <laughs> noggin of mine <laughs> I bet that there are doctors and people who could help you. Definitely. Specifically to know what I'm dreaming, though. Not yeah. to sleep better, just to know what my dreams yeah. are. Yeah. That's a good start, though. I think for all of us, that would be a good start if we knew that our dreams meant something and they were trying to give us a message. Right. What was the specific wording or idea that you said? Yeah, that, that you know definitively that there is meaning and messages mm. in your dreams that would be helpful if you understood them. Yeah, then I would do that, too. 
Like I remember some of my dreams, mm. but maybe one every other night. Like that's not enough. If there's a meaning in there, I need to get as close to hundred yeah. percent of memory as I can. So I would definitely do that bed thing where I got a little notebook and I'm yeah. writing it down. I did that for a while. And it was really fun. Yeah. I did that for a while really too. Cool. And I did notice an uptick yeah. in like how long I could hold on to the mm-hmm. details in my right. brain. It's, it's a training thing. Really. No, I just I did, sort of definitely. do it out loud to Tanner, Aww. which he loves. He treasures those moments. I think after after doing that, after kind of maximizing the dream potential, I would probably try to get a big aggregate of dream interpreters together because I don't. I would never trust just one. Like dream interpretation books, as we all know, are off the rails. Sometimes they are ridiculously speculative, and other times I'm like, oh, I could see how that would be true. You know. Like, oh, there's a snake in your dream. What does it mean? And the answer there's a is, snake in my is dream. that there's actually a snake in my bed right now. And I'm like, yep, you got it, dream interpreter. Nailed it in one. I think the thing that's funny about dream interpretation books is that some of them are just like reprinted from like hundreds of years ago. <laughs> yeah. It's just like what this like it's weird absurd. forest witch thought. Mm-hmm. I think what I would try to do is I would, I would find the things that were the most, uh, what's the word? squishy the, the things that happened the most often i would make a big yeah, like frequent. what happens in all of these dreams like what are the constants in all like of these patterns and yeah i try to figure out as many patterns as i could i would treat them like a puzzle honestly because i feel like if somebody's trying to communicate with you via dreams they, they could communicate more effectively by just saying things to you in your dream and clearly that's not what's happening so i need a way to like decipher the code of the ghost that's trying to talk to me from beyond the grave it's or like, something like the cheese man in the buffy episode the cheese man tell yeah. me more Mike. oh well there's an, an episode of the last the last episode of the last or the fourth season of Buffy Mm -hmm. they all have dreams and they all go have their own weird it's a real weird episode it's pretty great but there's a man with a bunch of uh American processed cheese yeah. that shows up in all their dreams. Oh, well, that's fun. So I think if you're seeing that, yeah. you could really like figure something mm-hmm. out. So you might walk into my office and see me with one of those bulletin boards full of red yarn and cheese man, question mark, question mark, yeah. question mark, just written across it also. And I wouldn't question what you were doing. No, honestly, that's one of the most legitimate things you could walk into that room and see me doing. <laughs> you're either tracking your dreams or a serial killer. Yeah. One of those two. Named and both the cheese man. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, it's not he, taken. He gets it by shoving the Velveeta right up your nose. She you didn't have to get into it. <laughs> I'm just um, giving you the details in case you do see Do you him. have any guesses right now as, as to, to some the of the things? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> as to some of the things your dreams have maybe been trying to tell you. That's a good question. About my dreams specifically. Yeah, like any recurring yeah. dreams or themes that you mm-hmm. think you could derive some meaning from? Definitely that I have a lot of dreams where things multiply and get out of hand. Mm. Uh, and I know that's a very common <laughs> thing that people uh, <laughs> interpret as being something. Sometimes it's anxiety. Sometimes it's, you know, that you want to have you're, kids, you're but pe- you're worried you're about it. Sometimes it's that you're pooping in your bed and you need to get up and go to the bathroom. <laughs> that's a classic interpretation. But I have a lot of those. Often it's a cat and then it's two cats and then I've accidentally taken in four or eight cats Wow, That's crazy. they're mating with each other somehow or like they turn into people and then I'm like no 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 Whoa. like I don't want this like get it out of here and so I there's a and those are very anxious dreams those are not dreams that are like oh boy I have lots of cats now it's yeah. very much I can't control the situation that I'm in right now and I need to figure out how to make it stop the hint of that if there's a greater truth in the world that i need to figure out it might be that something somewhere is spreading and i need to try to stop it maybe like a disease Mm. or a harmful idea or something like that maybe could be one of my mission from this dream ghost or maybe you forgot to videotape the episode of The Trouble with Tribbles from the original Star Trek. You might be right. I mean, <laughs> a lot of dreams on the Star Trek show. Yeah. I feel like sci-fi fantasy uses, sci-fi fantasy and yeah. horror both use dreams a lot. It's like the OG sci-fi fantasy. Yeah. It's a dream yeah. Yeah. It totally is. It totally is. So I think that's why, you know the show I Dream of Genie? That was about <laughs> Gene Roddenberry, actually. They oh. call him Genie. Oh, that's and that's <laughs> why so many Star Trek are about dreams. Okay. You see? I thought it was a very problematic show about a woman serving a man. Oh, no, it was, but it was based on Gene Roddenberry's life. Oh, that was... (laughs) They took some liberties with the text. Emily, what's going on in your dreams? Oh, man. Um, So I would take this very seriously. Uh, Mm. I have always been really obsessed with dreams. In fact, in eighth grade, we were given this actually really lazy assignment (laughs) 
that was just like pick a sciencey topic and uh, do a report on it, <laughs> present it. That was it. <laughs> yeah, just, I don't know. And like you like pick a partner or something like that. But I yeah. remember I loved like loopholes like that with mm-hmm. classes that I wasn't crazy about, where I could like make it something that I was currently obsessed with. I think I've already talked about my Titanic diorama. Oh, you yeah. sure? Um, Multiple times. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, and th- that is just one example of many, but uh, I think so my, good. my friend and I decided to be partners and we were like dreams. So I made my dreams. mom take me to Barnes and Noble and I bought a couple of dream books yes. and I oh like, they were probably just terrible, stupid books that were not <laughs> sciencey at all. Mm-hmm. But I like scoured those puppies and pretended for months. Like I was, the leading scientist on dreams. <laughs> I love how it's like there is some science to it, but then also a bunch of mystery to it. I just think that's right. super interesting. But I think if I learned that there was like actually some weight to it, I would mm. go all oh. in. Oh, yeah. Probably do all the things like keep a really intense dream journal, maybe go see some experts or something. Ooh. Since I do have a lot of like recurring sort of types of dreams and themes. Um, one that I would really like to figure out more about is I have the classic back at school dream. Yes. You awesome. still do? I hate it. Oh, yeah. Yep. For I sure. I work at a school and I don't have that. Yeah, no, I for sure have them <laughs> at it, least wait. every couple months. Back at school, generally towards the beginning of the year, but like not like first day school. school uh, usually high school or college. High school or college. Okay. And it is, I figure out that there is a class or two that I have not been going to God. and there's a test. Yes. I had that in This college. is hitting me way too hard. Yeah. Like, this is exactly the kind of thing However, that I have sometimes. I However, here's it. this, the Emily spin oh, on it. okay. <laughs> it's also, so that part is stressful. Very. But also the dream overall is very exciting and kind of fun. Interesting. In the sort of, I don't know if you guys got this, but I was a big nerd in terms of like back to school excitement. Oh, yeah. I love mm-hmm. the back to school mm-hmm. shopping for clothes yeah. and school supplies. <laughs> I loved getting super organized. Yeah. I loved those Little first few days keepers. of school and like organizing my looking at my schedule and getting so excited about all my mm-hmm. classes. Yeah, totally. So a large portion of these dreams, even though they're clearly like is a stress element to them, it's also me being really into all that other stuff too Mm -hmm. and excited by Mm -hmm. it right so it's like a weird combination and i want to figure out what's going on there yeah why i don't know i don't know it's like things that bring me joy also bring me stress maybe i mean that seems inherently true about a lot of life yeah but i just want to know if there's something more to that that would be like one of my first things i'd want to check off Mm. like what's going on there yeah how do I get to the bottom of why those like weird fun slash stress combo dreams happen? Yeah. Are you supposed to go back to school? Is that it? Oh, <laughs> like maybe I mean, that's honestly, it. that kind of sounds fun. I'd just be super into it, though, in general. Oh, yeah. I would love it. I would spend so much time thinking about it, studying it, learning it. I think it would make my life a lot Never better, shutting actually. up about it. I think it would be really fun. Yeah, I don't think I would either. It's like eight hours of my life. Yeah. Every day is a third of my life. I'm asleep. Sometimes more like a quarter. But mostly a third yeah uh <laughs> i mean for me it's like a quarter yeah if i'm like, lucky yeah if i'm lucky <laughs> that's and why i don't dream i guess <laughs> maybe but that's so much meaning that i just got for free that i was otherwise assuming is basically just like shut down time then becomes exciting time because when i go to bed i'm like i'm buckled up what you gonna give me gene roddenberry what if it's just a commercial for something <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yeah, all dreams are just product placement for specific Drink things. Drink more Ovaltine. Oh Emily's my gosh, is just a commercial for the University of Minnesota. Mine is just a commercial for pet adoption. No, it's the kind of thing where you'd have to like really go deep in it and then you'd see subtle product placement. Ah, okay. Like the cats are always wearing Nikes. Yeah. The next segment that we wrestle with here on the Hypothetic Cast is called Would You Blank It? Ugh. What? It's just I, that was my pleasure sound. <laughs> it's very confusing to partners. Okay, great. <laughs> the next segment we do here on the Hypothetic Cast is called Would You Blank It? We fill in that blank with a different action word or verb every week. This week, we're going to do Would You Dream It? We're going to take a scenario and go back and forth, making it mm-hmm. more or less appealing and generally more weird and seeing mm-hmm. if our participant, who will be Emily, will accept this scenario or choose to opt out, Wake we'll up? say. Yeah. Oh, I guess I don't know. Because, what this... well, yes, of course, it's would you dream it? Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. here's our scenario. 
I'm taking this from an old dream book, which Emily and oh. I know well. And oh I think my David. Gosh, yes. So. I was going to <laughs> uh, yeah. insist that we discuss this. Yeah. So I, oh my gosh. I knew you almost mentioned it earlier when you mentioned old dream yep, books. Yep, and I, I, did. I actually thought of it and I was like, I know I can Google it if I know all the keywords. Oh, yes. So let me give you a little backstory and then we'll get into it. <laughs> this, I think I originally discovered it in high school when I grabbed a book off of the like discard cart at the library in for Fergus Falls Public Library, and it was called 10,000 Dreams Interpreted. And yeah. I didn't think much of it, but I was just like, all right, seems cool. And it was all pretty like standard stuff. Like, you know, yeah, you dream of like falling down and then that means bad fortune. And I looked mm, and it was yeah. a dream book that had been published like in the early 1900s, yeah. I think. You can find it in our bookstore days. It came in multiple times with yeah. like totally different covers. Yeah, it's like out it's, there. It's like yeah. an old thing mm. that just keeps getting republished. Find one where you live. There's probably one in your house yeah. right now. Anyway. Under the horse category, there are a lot of horse <laughs> interpretations. There's a horse category. And most I of love them are like, is. I oh, love yeah. dream books so and much. most of them are like, if you dream of a brown horse, it means a family member is in trouble. Oh, yeah. For a young girl to dream that she rides a black horse means oh. that she should be dealt with by wise authority. Oh, which, good which lord. Is, <laughs> okay, Uninstall. I picked that one at random. But, That's so but, unfortunate. No, delete your but phone that now. is a good example of like this sort of weird, old, but yeah. also short yeah interpretations mm, that, that this book nice. gives yeah. you until so then you get you look through and then towards the end of the horse category there's this scenario so we're gonna imagine that emily is um she's sleeping one night and we'll say that you you have this inkling that you're dreaming and that you you know mm -hmm. how when you realize you're dreaming you actually can wake up sometimes yeah i don't know if you've yeah. experienced that yeah. so you're gonna be having this dream and you can decide to wake up at any time that is nice you see a horse in human flesh descending on a hammock through the air and as it nears your house it is metamorphosed into a man and he approaches your door and throws something at you which seems to be rubber but turns <laughs> into great bees <laughs> <laughs> do you dream I it, love Emily? It so much. Do you there dream are so this? So many things about um, that. Honestly, I'm s I've been obsessed with that sentence for years now. <laughs> uh, Can we get it just one more time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a lot to unpack. There's a there lot really to unpack, is. and I think we might need to go line by line. Yeah, um, yeah. I think so, so here's what you're seeing in your dream. You see a horse in human flesh descending on a hammock through the air. And as it nears your house, it is metamorphosed into a man. And he approaches your door and throws something at you, which seems to be rubber, but turns into great bees. What? <laughs> what? How? Oh, that seems like... Oh, no, it's great bees. So, like, the guy writing that book... Had that dream and it was like, oh, that everybody probably has that one. <laughs> well, what gets me most <laughs> is the first couple words are just yeah. a horse in human flesh, which I am struggling to picture I don't even, even that. that. Is. Like, is, is he wearing a man suit? Yeah, is it, yeah, oh, is it the yeah. centaur? Is it just a horse with human skin? With skin instead of like, oh, like yeah. horse hair? A horse with a human a horse face. horse in human flesh. Anyway, I love it so much. I would absolutely have that dream <laughs> just because I love oh, yeah. this. You have to. This entry in this book so Honestly, much. how could anyone um, say no to that? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So, you have the dream. Uh, the, the word great bees means that they are very, very good at sting. Uh, this means that the next <laughs> section of your dream involves these bees all over your body, stinging you one sting oh, at a time. However, the fun thing is, the man horse has gotten back into its hammock, and it is reading you a nice story. Would you dream it? There's some pain now, oh, but you yeah. also get this horse's I tail. I am a really big baby about pain and mm, like baby. bugs. So I think pain I'm going to, I'm going to wake up if there are st bees stinging me. Too many great stings. But wait, those bees really are rubber bees. So as <gasps> they approach you to sting, their little stingers just kind of bounce off. Oh, that's nice. Uh, and so you're hanging out in your home because this dream is set in your yeah, home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> you, you, things get mundane for a little bit and the horse sets up his hammock in the corner of your living room sure and the horse in human flesh just kind of makes himself at home and this oh, dream goes on for great. a few days oh jeez and he's not moving out <laughs> and you don't really know how to approach this because it's hard to know how to talk to a horse in human flesh yeah. it's hard it enough to English? know what that is probably not it speaks through a series of grunts mm. and taps of its hooves on the yeah ground. like a regular horse 
Yeah. But I learned to understand it. No. Oh. <laughs> it seems to make complicated <laughs> demands of you, but you don't know what to do. So you yeah, try tough. giving it various foods, but it mostly kicks them out the window. <laughs> do you want to stay in this dream, even though the it's bees are rubber? It's kind of boring. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the bees boring. being rubber was a nice twist. I'm intrigued, but I feel like if it's gone on for that long and our communication is not getting any better, I'm going to give up and wake up. <laughs> it's boring our communication dreams. is not getting any better. Well, right before you wake up, you notice out of the corner of your eye a little development, and it looks like the human flesh that the horse is wearing is coming off. <laughs> and what you see underneath is Tanner. <laughs> it was Tanner all along. It was Tanner wearing horse flesh, wearing human flesh. Sure. Is what was, it was that classic dream, which we didn't look up in this book, but sure. definitely exists. Yep. And he's, he's kind of poking his little head out and he says, Emily, wait, do you dream it? <laughs> That's it. It's just yeah, Tanner. Yeah. Yeah. I'll stick around for that. Okay. That seems like it could be significant. So yeah, it's just, it's your husband. And then like you start just living your life, just start living your normal life in your dream. And it becomes such that like, you're not sure if you're dreaming or awake. Like, oh, wait, yeah. so is Tanner still like inside of the horse? Well, he comes out oh, okay, and great. the horse flesh just kind of dissolves into the floor. Okay. Hammock <laughs> is still there. Um, yeah, free hammock out of it. Yeah. Also, but, can I address how we're saying the word hammock? Say it again. Hammock. Okay. That's pretty weird, right? I, I mean, I you can pronounce hammock, it however you but want. But I think that some people do say hammock. Okay. Ham- well, clearly, yeah, at least one does. What I'm saying is ham hock. Ham- oh. So there's a ham hock in the corner See that? Of your, I'm of buckled up and ready to go. I want a ham hock. Yeah, it's just like you live for like the, a day and you're like, I think this is just my life, but in a dream. And Tanner's here and we have a hammock in the corner of our living room, but everything else is pretty much the same. <laughs> and so like you can just continue your life in your dream. Well, does that appeal to you, Emily? I mean, I'm assuming that it seems like we're going for like that it's pretty mundane. If you said I can't really tell the difference anymore, but I still know I'm dreaming. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's true. But maybe it's more confusing for you. Mm. I don't like that ambiguity, Just, that confusion. So I would wake up then. Yeah. Okay. If I was starting to not be able to tell, I would wake up. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's your life as normal. You know, it's a dream, but you start to realize every day you wake up, your house gets nicer and nicer and you're seeing more and more things. You're just kind of becoming richer somehow and you're not really sure how because it's a dream and you know the logic doesn't always connect. But you wake up and you have a better sofa and then you have a better table and then there's an addition built on your house and then you go to the bank and you realize you have like a hundred thousand more dollars than you thought you had and your car is nicer and every day something changes for the better but you know it's still a dream. Are you staying in the dream? Yeah, no, I'm going to ride that shit out. (laughs) That sounds amazing. As someone who, uh, within the last six months, bought a house and two cars recently. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and you know, the adulthood expenses just keep on piling. Um, <laughs> and our, Mary, in like our twenties and early thirties, I feel like we were just kind of like, we're fine. You know, like everything <laughs> was just kind of like, <laughs> we'll put a little bit in savings, like, uh, you know, every month and like, it'll yeah. just kind of grow and we'll never need to touch it. And now <laughs> we're like, dear God. <laughs> so to get to live in a reality, even if I know it's a dream, <laughs> Where every day I get a little more financially secure. Oh, this yeah. I will nice. ride yeah. that out. <laughs> Absolutely. So you continue to live in the dream world and your house is like pretty much a mansion at this point. Like there's a fire pole that goes from the top floor to the oh, bottom God. floor. I guess <laughs> that's what rich people have. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the first thing I would of, put in my yeah. house if I was rich. I mean, I guess if I went into someone's house and they had a fire pole, I would assume one of two things. They were firefighters or they were rich. Yeah, it's really nice. And your life is pretty much like you still feel the love you feel from your husband and family and friends. Like you don't feel like you're really missing anything. So you're like, I'm just, I like, I still have the control to wake up (laughs) if I need to, but I'm just going to keep going with this. And then uh, one day you go into the kitchen and uh, Tanner's making breakfast. He's making your favorite breakfast. I'm scared. The presence of Tanner is making me afraid. And you walk into the kitchen. (laughs) It's excitement, David. You're confusing it. You see the the horse flesh man (laughs) is, is frying up some bacon. What? And then you're like, what? And you like rub your eyes and then it's Tanner. And he's like, oh, hey, hon. And then he wraps his arms around you, gives a little smooch. And then everything's fine. 
Uh, but you're like, that was kind of weird. What do you think? Do you want us to live in this nice weird. house? That is kind of weird. And here's the thing. Do you, how long has it been? Uh, we'll say it's been a couple months. Okay. A couple months I in this dream world. I feel like if I have the sense that it's been a couple months, at that point, I would be starting to get concerned that there's something wrong in my waking life. Oh, you've been put in a coma by yeah. some sort of accident. And the hint of like creepiness in like Tanner changing back into the human flesh horse, uh, <laughs> that unnerves me enough to like also be wary. So I think I would at that point wake up. Mm, that seems smart. So you, you do wake up and you roll over in bed <laughs> and Tanner's not there. You hear him making breakfast downstairs. <laughs> How do you guys but, know he makes me breakfast every morning? <laughs> oh, I don't know, but he must. But what you do see is some smatterings, a sprinkling of oats. Hello, everyone. It is our next segment. It is called If I Were You. It's a game that we play for fun where we pretend that we are you. And then we say what we would do. What do you got? I would watch the 1980s movie Dreamscape starring, uh, I believe, Dennis Quaid and Kate Capshaw. And they, um, well, Dennis Quaid somehow has the power to go inside people's dreams. Nice. And there's like an evil man who has the power to do this too. And so Uh the movie has some very strange, surreal scenes of them like fighting in different people's dream worlds. Cool. It's a really cheesy premise there's something i love about uh, movies from the 80s is that they were just like sure we're gonna make that movie and it was goofy and weird and fun and uh, you should go find a copy dreamscape it's somewhere out there (laughs) just go go get it go get it if i were you i'm going off theme as per (laughs) usual um i would go to a library or a bookstore and find really any book by kate de camillo she is a young Mm. adult author who is from Minnesota, actually. Yeah. And all of her books are delightful. But I just True. recently read, I think, what is my favorite of her books. And so I would highly recommend it. It is called Flora and Ulysses. Oh, yeah. I don't even know how to describe it. It's it's a really simple story. The way she tells it is so lovely and beautiful. And it's it's definitely like a light fun story for young adults but it is also and by young adults i mean that in the book way which is like i don't know 10 and up 10 and Um, whoever you want to be but also it deals with like really real issues like loneliness and like broken families and not really knowing what your purpose is and it's just it's so beautiful i loved it so much flora and ulysses by kate de camillo wow if i were you I would visit the last winter market of the season. Ha ha, surprise. We have a sponsor this week. It's <laughs> the winter market. Uh, the funny thing about this is I actually would and am going to do <gasps> this thing. Not even like people when they're like, oh yeah, I have a Casper mattress. I sleep on it all the time. <laughs> like you don't. You, you put do? it in the garage. No, I don't. That, I got you with that lie. See? Uh-huh. I want one. Just like every other podcast gets you with their lies. Not this one. This one only tells truth. The Northeast Minneapolis Farmers Market is a nonprofit organization dedicated to providing the community with local and organic food choices, along with a fun and diverse gathering place for neighbors near and far. That's true in general. They do this thing called the winter market in uh, winter where they go inside and there's a bunch of stalls. There's like a bunch of bread and mustard and weird snacks cool stuff. I bought a lot of my Christmas presents there last year and they were all big hits. Some nice kimchi, all that sort of thing. This one, the next one is happening on Sunday, March 17th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the Solar Arts Building in Northeast. If you live in Minneapolis at all or you're in the state, honestly, it's like worth it because there's so many good gift ideas and so many nice things that you can get for yourself that you will like get yourself a gift this saint patrick's day season (laughs) Uh, there will be food and drinks by chow girls we really do very good food and drinks the ring toss twins will be spinning vinyl which means they are playing music for you young kids out there and there will be kids activities and over 35 of your favorite local vendors i think kids know what vinyl is Nah. okay they're Actually, is something for everyone because it's like the most family friendly atmosphere ever. I've gone a couple times and I like it every time. And there's like kids running around doing magic tricks. The kids aren't doing magic tricks. There was a magician there last time. What if I don't like fun? Stay away. Don't be like this guy. Have fun. Go to the winter market March 17th. 
10 a.m. to 2 p.m. If you listeners would like to find us someplace on the internet, you could just Google us, I guess. But you could also find us on Facebook, Instagram at hypotheticast underscore IG. We're on Twitter. You could email us hypotheticast at gmail.com. Or you could go to our website, which is hypotheticast.club. We would love to hear from you. Either that can be through a Facebook post. We have an exclusive, it's called the Hypotheticast Fan Collaboratory. You can join that if you want to be part of the inner circle of Hypotheticast yes. fans. It's free, but we uh, have fun little discussions on there. Also, our regular Facebook posts are good to interact with because then we get seen by more things things because of the complicated algorithms of Facebook. Also, leaving a review on iTunes or a podcast app of your choice is very helpful. And telling your friends. So tell a friend about the Hypotheticast. Do that. Thank you to Jaden James and The Hunger for the use of their song, Killing It, from their album, Raw. It's great. Thank you to Christian Hagen for his logo. It is great. And thank you to Radio 5 Watt, a locally focused music, arts, and culture internet radio station that streams 24 hours a day. It's got a bunch of music on it, all local stuff. Really good. I've discovered some good artists just kind of tuning in at different points throughout the day. But if you want to tune in to a specific point, we are there every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. You can hear our episode 11 hours early, which is a real privilege. And I know you want to get in to this elevator and ride (laughs) with us to the top floor of entertainment. That's a thing people say. Thank you also to the listeners for being great. You really are. You're so good. We have looked into every one of you and you are morally good people. Yeah, it's true. (laughs) I found Santa's naughty list. You're not on there. I am. (laughs) Whoops. (laughs) You wanted to be. I'm on the naughty list that I made for myself. It's on my mirror and it says naughty list, David, winky face. (laughs) So people have aspirational quotes on their mirrors. (laughs) David has that. I have a note that says I'm on the naughty list. God, I hate myself. (laughs) This last segment is called No Questions Asked. It's a segment where I ask you one question and then you don't get to ask any questions. This last question comes from Phil Hilla. Would you rather, for the rest of your life, have Nicolas Cage or Jack Black in every one of your dreams? Jack Black. Jack Black. Nicolas Cage. Okay, have a good time. Be safe. Be smart. Drive with accordance to the law. Assertively. Assertively. Not aggressively, not passively. Assertively. Yes, assertively and collaboratively. Make sure to zipper merge. Uh, Let's just give a lot of practical driving advice right now. I think that's what people are tuning in for. (laughs) My advice is don't drive. Don't drive. Yeah, don't drive. There you go. Don't drink and don't drive. You've heard don't drink and drive. That actually just means don't drink and also don't drive. No, Do drink, as little. Life drink and don't drive. Drink and don't drive. Do as hey. little as possible in general. I like that. Drink and don't drive. Yeah. That's great. Love you guys. Love you, bye. bye. I like you a lot. I'm watching, watching. To dream of a horse with a sore foot means that some unexpected pleasantness will imply itself into your otherwise favorable state. I don't think something can imply itself. What does that even mean, book?